You, what are you spending your money on this holiday season? I hope it's not more way too expensive plugins, pointless sample packs that you're going to definitely put on your hard drive and never use again. Yeah. Never let these thoughts see the light of day Please don't run away Wherever you are feeling out of place Today I'm going to go over my top 5 favorite Ableton Max for Live tools that are anywhere from the $20 range down to the free range. So let's jump right into Ableton and we will start. These are all going to be tools and if you guys want instruments or sequencers, more effects type stuff, uh, I can definitely do a video on that too, but today is going to be all tools. So the first one that we are going to look at is one that is called Clip Gain. Now, down here on my master track, we have this little Max for Live device that I always keep kind of folded away, and it is Clip Gain. So basically what Clip Gain does is it takes the functionality of changing the gain of an audio clip and makes it a lot easier. So normally what you'd have to do is you're going to have to click into your audio track, come over here into this little gain window and change it here. That is annoying, especially if you're doing a mixing session and you are trying to change the audio levels on a lot of different things. So what this does is it allows you to then map a macro. And so all I have to do is come over here, hover over this loop and then hit my macro, whatever I have put to it, mine is G. And look at that. We have this floating window here where I can turn off and on the clip. I can change the clip gain. I can change the pitch down semitones or octaves. I can even change my warping modes. There's a lot of stuff that you can do inside of this, and so it kind of takes most of the functionality that you would get out of this audio editor window, all the stuff that you're gonna use on a more normal basis, that is, and puts it into a really easy to use and accessible device. So there's still stuff that you're gonna to need to come into this window for, but for most of the things that I am using this window for, it is literally just this gain slider, especially when I'm dragging in samples because all samples are gonna clip your master and we hate that. Pretty easy, that one right there is uh, $4. I will put a link to it down in the description. I'm not affiliated with any of these uh, plugin makers or max for live device uh, designers, however you wanna call it, but they're all things that I use on a daily basis, so I'm sharing them with you here. So that one is probably my most used just because I can just click it with the macro, super easy. All right, so my second most used Max for Live device, arguably about the same as the last one, is going to be this GM audio clipper right here. What this is, is exactly what it says it is. It is an audio clipper, and it's usually on every single track that I have. So let's jump in, let's show you how this works really quick. As you see right here, we have our threshold, which is this line here, and then you can just kinda drag that to wherever you want your ceiling to be. You have a pretty simple interface. You can also solo whatever's going through it. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot to say on this one. This is a really simple audio clipper. It is gonna be a lot cheaper than most of the other ones that you buy in plugin form, and also is a Max for Live device, so it is A, going to be more efficient than most plugins, and B, you've got a really nice visual interface that is always down here inside of your little Ableton rack. That one right there is going to be $20 at the time of recording. I will link that one down below as well. Let's move on before this video ends up being an hour when it was supposed to be five minutes. So the third device that I wanna to show to you is going to be a really, really nice, useful, make your day a little easier Max for Live device. And it is going to be this one here, Bounce in Place, B-I-P. What bouncing is, is taking your usually MIDI track or multiple audio tracks and then basically resampling them onto a new track, bouncing them to stems is uh, where you might hear that term a lot. Without something like this, you're going to have a new track that you're going to have to make. You're going to have to set it to resampling, then solo the track that you want to resample or mute every track that you don't want it to take in. Honestly, it's not a ton of steps. However, this device here definitely makes it 10 times easier. What you can do, set it on whatever track you want to uh, resample. It can be the master track if you want. On this, you can decide if you want the new audio to go to a new track or a custom track. You know, custom name the track. I'm just going to put new track. Then you can decide if you want post mixer, master, or post effects. Usually, I am doing this to bounce MIDI clips to audio clips. And so this is going to be a post effects bounce in place. And so I have this on my ARP track here. I'm going to set my playhead back to the beginning of this loop. And then I am going to click post effects. 
And if you look, it is instantly going to solo the track that I want to resample. It is going to set my recording to record. It's gonna set the new track to record and set the input on that new track to the arpeggiator track. So just a bunch of little steps mixed into one simple yet very useful device that has saved me many, many hours, especially when I'm wanting to bounce multiple tracks or I'm wanting to bounce stems for remixing or for mastering. Point being is uh, if you don't want to go through all those steps every time you want to bounce to audio, which you should always bounce to audio before you mix and master, actually it doesn't really matter. But I always do usually just to save my CPU or if I'm making tracks for live performance in Ableton Live, I will always bounce them to audio because I try to keep as much MIDI not being used live as possible. So bounce in place is just a really easy way to take all those steps and set it into one simple, one simple button. That one is actually $4 currently, so it is. All right, so the next one is going to be even simpler than the rest, and this one actually you can get for free if you would like to. I paid for it a long time ago, A, because I support the, this creator a ton and he makes some really cool stuff, and B, because I wanted the extra functionality out of it. So the fourth device we're gonna be talking about is this little one right here, NTPD, otherwise known as Notepad. Notepad is exactly what it sounds like, and it sounds kind of dumb, but hear me out. It is just going to be a little Max for Live device that you can type whatever you want into. Right here, I have uh, V1, so version one, the BPM, and the key, just in case this this master key gets changed or I have multiple versions of the track and don't you know label them correctly. I'm trying to figure out which version the current one that I'm working on is, or I'm trying to look through different projects. I can have that there that tells me everything, especially if I'm doing remixes or I'm doing bootlegs or something where I need the BPM and the key of the track. And if I've changed it at all for my remix, then I, I like to be able to see the original settings or original data for the song. Sometimes that comes in handy. So I like to keep that down there. If you pay for it, you get uh, different colors, you get different font sizes, and also you get this fancy little floating window out here, which I have put a nice hello into, and then you can actually change the font size for that and the color as well. So you can actually change the color to whatever you want. You can change the color of that floating one. You can also change all of the other variables of the floating notepad separate to down here, and you can have two separate ones. So if you have something you need floating for whatever reason, I use that one on almost every track. And that one, like I said, can be free if you want more functionality out of it. It is $10. That one is by Elephant, which is, if you don't know who he is, definitely someone to look into if you use a lot of Ableton devices or just use Ableton in general. He makes a lot of cool Max for Live devices. All of them have been useful. There is a lot of free ones by him as well. So definitely look into them. Link down in the description. Now we're on to number five. So number five is going to be another free device. This one is actually right beside Notepad and Clipgain, BPM Converter. So this is a nice tool to keep just in your master track or in a track that you don't care getting too cluttered up. So I definitely don't want my master cluttered up, but until I get mixing and mastering, I don't use a lot of the stuff over here. So like I have a, an EQ and a limiter always on on the master, but in terms of like mastering limiter and uh, mastering oppressor, that kind of stuff, I don't usually mess with that stuff too much while I am writing a song or tracking songs. So I have, you know, a few other metering devices over here collapsed, but I also always have this BPM converter here. What this is going to do is take the BPM of your song and convert it to either milliseconds or hertz, where this is going to come in handy, especially is going to be when you are using things like an LFO, where if you want to have the automation of the LFO change in a very smooth way, you don't want to automate it within the sync because then it will go from like 1 8th to 1 16th, 1 32nd, and so it'll be jumping between those different time signatures on the BPM converter, it actually tells you, you know, compared to syncing up with your tempo, what the hertz or millisecond numbers are going to be for each 
of the different divisions for that tempo. And this is just honestly a super simple but super useful tool. You can change the decimal places as well if you want super specific. And so I've used this a ton when I am modulating things and automating things in usually Serum or any other synth where I want the automation to be smooth but I need it to land at a very specific spot. And like I said, it's free. So that is a tool to throw into your user library for whenever you need it. Or even if you're not at the point where you're using a lot of Hertz conversions or automation, it will definitely come in handy at some point once you get farther down the line. So I definitely recommend picking that one up. We have those two free Max for Live devices, two $4 Max for Live devices, and one $20 these are all what I would consider to be tools. That was five Max for Live tools for you today. I am probably going to do instruments and also effects in the near future. So if you have anything that you didn't see in this video that you like to use, let me know down in the comments. If you have any instruments or effects that you want to see as I make these next couple videos, I will make sure to put them on the list. Uh, and if I don't see it until after I make it, then I might come back and do this video again if it is a popular enough thing. Hit that like button below, really helps me out. And uh, comment down below what other Max for Live tools, instruments, or devices you like to use in your normal everyday workflow. Until next time, have a wonderful day.